What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about a new study on cold plunging. But first, you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new study just got published in the Journal of Applied Physiology looking at the use of either cold plunge, water recovery, I suppose, like room temperature water recovery, or just passive recovery in adolescent swimmers. So these were 14 year olds and they were doing pretty hard training, like two hours of training, three days a week and looking at their swim performance. They were also doing resistance training. Now this was a randomized control trial where they did a crossover, which meant that each subject functioned as their own control. Now this is a benefit because it means that you're controlling for individual genetics. The downside you could argue in this study is that there can be training effects that are cumulative throughout the process and therefore when you're doing one treatment having them switch to another treatment after a washout period which was a week and then to another treatment that could affect the results. But I'll explain later why I don't think that was the case. So they had them resistance train as well as do their swimming protocols three days a week and then after training they would have them sit for 12 minutes either in room temperature water, cold water, which was around 11 to 14 degrees. And another interesting thing that they did was they constantly agitated the cold water. And I have noticed this when I've done cold plunging. Uh, if you sit very, very still, you don't feel as cold. Whereas if you're moving around, you feel more cold. That's because your body kind of can insulate itself, kind of like a protective uh, area of warmth of insulation around you but when you agitate the water, you take that away. Now these teenagers either did that or they had them sit in room temperature water or they had them just sit by the pool, walk around, and they looked at did this affect performance, recovery, and did it affect their perceptions of pain. Basically what they found was that they improved their performance throughout the course of the experiment, but there was no difference between treatments. So each treatment was equally effective for the objective markers. And even with like pain, discomfort, there was no real difference between the regular room temperature water versus the cold water. Now at the end of it, they asked the teenagers, what do you prefer? And I think something like 65% said they preferred cold water. You might say, well, why is that if it wasn't having an actual effect? Well, again, people are subject to the power of suggestion, i.e. placebo. And so, it's very likely that a lot of people have seen ads on social media, on TV about the benefits of cold plunging and therefore believe that they were getting better results from cold plunging. But the actual data didn't really back this up. You could argue that because of the crossover design where they're doing one treatment, then a washout, then a treatment, then a washout, then a treatment, that well, there could have been training induced cumulative effects that would have affected the results. But if that was the case, it would have been equally distributed across all the groups because of the randomized block design and therefore you, it really doesn't matter because all of them increased their performance doing the different treatments. There just wasn't any difference between the treatments. What do I think this actually means? I think it just adds to the body of literature showing that cold plunge isn't really magic. Some people like it. I think one thing we need to disconnect here is that you're allowed to do something just because you like it. You don't have to come up with reasons as to why it's the best thing ever. And so many people, wow, I wanna get in and do it because of dopamine hit, or I wanna do it because it, improve, it decreases inflammation. Listen, the, the research doesn't really support a ton of benefits to cold plunging other than it appears to reduce delayed onset muscle soreness. That's kind of about it. Do some people like doing it and feel better doing it? Yes, I know many people like that. To which I say, by all means, go do it. And some people say, you know, well, it just wakes me up in the morning, makes me feel refreshed. My brain feels more clear. Then why do you need evidence? If you like it and you feel that way, then continue to do it. Now, the one thing to consider is that while it may reduce delayed onset muscle soreness, if you are somebody who's interested in building muscle, it has been shown to decrease hypertrophy or muscle growth when you do it regularly. Now some people will say, well, that's, that's only if you do it after the workout, if you do it before the workout. There's no studies looking at that. What we do know is people in studies where they do cold plunge, they get less muscle. Now you can still grow muscle doing cold plunge. You just probably won't grow as much as you would if you weren't doing it. But if you're not interested in being the most jacked human possible, then cold plunge away. Again, I'm not saying it's bad or you shouldn't do it. I'm simply saying it doesn't appear 
to be a super unique recovery modality that improves performance. All right, guys, if you like research breakdowns like this, make sure you subscribe to my research review reps. Every month, we break down five studies that are popular in fitness and nutrition in a way that's palatable and easy for anyone to understand, giving you practical takeaways, and we explain whether or not we necessarily agree with the researchers' conclusions based on their own data. So we give you the straight facts in a way that's easy to understand and apply to yourself or, if you're a coach, to your clients. So make sure you click the link in the description and sign up, and I'll catch you guys next week.